the uh, Metac oil training room. As you can see, we have various makes of boilers. We've got a Fire, uh, Firebird 5090 Popular, a Grant uh, Boiler House model, a 7090 Multipass. We have a Grant Combination Boiler that supplies constant hot water and central heating. Over in this corner, we have another combination boiler, Worcester Bosch, and his little brother, a Green Star Camry, 1218 kilowatts. On, on this side of the room, we have a Grant Utility Vortex boiler, a condensing boiler, and in the next bay to it, we have a Firebird Environmax 35 kilowatt boiler. The boilers at this end of the workshop are high efficiency condensing boilers, but we also train uh, the technicians here to work on the older boilers, the standard efficiency boilers, as in this Grant and Firebird, this uh, Euroflame model. Also, in this corner here, we do training uh, and awareness of vaporising stoves, which obviously oil fired. Um, one of the basic things, the faults on boilers, number one fault is people run out of oil. And for the consumer, we're going to highlight ways that you can bleed your boiler in a simple and safe manner. Well, as we've just seen some of the burners in uh, the boilers in the workshop and with the burners attached. Here's a selection of some burners here. Uh, basically, the reason why it's run out of oil is because the oil pump is no longer being fed with the oil. It's got an airlock. So the, what's got to be, we've got to expel the air from the oil pump for the burner to work correctly. Without doing that, the burner will not fire. Now the manufacturers have facilitated on their board a test point here or a bleeding point point. We take this out with the appropriate Allen key and we fit the tech the qualified technician would fit a what we call a test manifold and bleeding arrangement. The reason why this is fitted because of oil spillage. We can control as operatives the oil coming out of the burner without certain types of little bits of equipment, you will have oil squirted all over your floor and it could be a fire hazard and if not an environmental hazard. So spillage has got to be avoided at all costs. There are several burners. If we look at this Riello burner here, they've all got different pumps on them. And I've got other pumps here. But in essence, they all work the same even though they look different. On some of the pumps, it will be indicated by letters P for pressure, V for vacuum, and so on. On this pump, this is one of the pressure port parts where the bleeding tool is, is fitted. But be careful, because very close to this is another uh, piece of equipment coming out of the pump that adjusts the pressure of the oil in the pump, not to be messed with at all. If accidentally you change it, and it looks like a bleed screw, you must fit this to bleed the air out of the pump. If you mess around with the adjustment screw, you will completely mess up the, the uh, setup for the boiler and it will smoke or not work properly at all. Looking at this Riella, very, very similar set up as well. On the front of the pump you have P for pressure on both sides of the pump indicating that this is where we put our bleeding equipment either a pressure gauge and there are other tools on the market to help you do this and one is called a boiler bleed. In actual fact it was invented by one of our technicians who trained at MeTac. Basically it's a very simple idea Basically, it's a very simple idea that fits all types of pumps because the, the thread is universal and it would help the homeowner 
bleed his own pump safely. What we do is remove the plug from the pressure pull part of the pump. Not and to avoid the screw system here that adjusts the pressure. If we, we remove this carefully and put in the boiler bleed, making sure that it's tight. When we are bleeding the boiler, we would have a tray to collect all the oil. Just giving you a demonstration here. So when you're bleeding the boiler, you can actually physically press that button and oil will come out, taking the air with it. But the technicians would use more advanced tools because they want to read the pressure when they've done it anyway. On some of the other pumps that are not as common, you can see V for vacuum. You've also got V for vacuum on this pump. That one is around the back. That does not mean vent. Right, we are now going to a bleed a boiler. Um, we know that uh, we've got a fault with this boiler because the, the light is illuminated on the control box. It's gone to lockout. Just to prove that, I'm going to reset it. And this is the kind of symptom you will get if your boiler's got air, or your burner's got air, air in the old line, and the air has got to be eliminated. It will try and fire, but it will go to lockout because it's got no oil to make the flame. You can see now that the light on the control box is illuminated. So therefore, we are now going to proceed to bleed the oil out of the, or uh, bleed the air out of the oil pump in a safe, correct manner. Before we proceed, however, make sure that the boiler is switched off both on the boiler itself and at the mains. Now, remember we're going to be bleeding air and oil out of the burner. So, down here we have a protective sheet. Get yourself a can. A takeaway aluminium tray is ideal. And any oil that we have left over, if it is clean, we can put into the tank. If it is dirty or contaminated oil, we can dispose of it in the correct manner. So, first of all, if you look at this pump, it's got an extension piece on it, which I am going to take out the screw. First of all, I'm just going to make sure the oil is off next to the boiler because there could be some residual oil in the oil line and we don't want to spill that. So we put some paper just to catch any drips, remove with a 4mm Allen key the little grub screw on the pressure port of the pump. Qualified technicians would have this piece of equipment as standard. It allows the technician to bleed the boiler and also to observe the pressure of the pump correctly. But as far as we're concerned, it's the same as using that boiler bleed. We've just got to concentrate on getting the air out of the pump. If you then put the bleeder on, if you're using the boiler bleed, so we catch all the oil, I will now turn the oil back on. Well, now we're going to proceed with eliminating the air from the oil pump. If the oil tank is on a gravity feed, which I mean by that the tank is on um, piers and above the burner, you could open this and let gravity feed take over, but that would not be sufficient to remove all the air. In actual fact, the burner itself has got to be running. The motor and the pump must be turning to force the air out, which I will show you. So if we turn that on, open up the vent on, yeah. Open up the vent on the bleeding equipment and press the lockout button. The pump will turn 
and you can see oil coming out now with lots of air coming out as well. So if we turn that off, we've eliminated the air and the boiler and the, bur the burner starts. If, however, the, boiler refu the burner refuses to start, it may be because air is trapped in the oil line from the tank and we would have to bleed it several times to eliminate that air by pressing the lockout button it will start and you will be able to observe the air coming out once you get a steady flow of clean fuel from your oil pump you've eliminated the air and your burner will start so we've successfully bled the oil pump and eradicated the air in the oil pump and the burner is now working so make sure that the, the boiler and the controls are turned off and turn the oil off next to the boiler if it has a tap. If not, as soon as you've got um, an isolating valve nearby, because if you do not do that, oil will trickle out of the pump before we can seal it. So we remove our bleeding equipment from the pump. making sure we put back the grub screw try not to over tighten the grub screw otherwise you'll damage the threads make sure you wipe any residual oil around from the pump do not leave oil standing because obviously it's flammable and dangerous now uh, what I forgot to mention to you that we really should be using gloves um, which I'll show you in a moment um, to stop any contamination of your skin. Uh, we will end up with some residual oil. If it is clean oil, put it back in the tank. Do not throw it or pour it down the drain or throw it on the ground. It is a pollutant. So if it is dirty, take it to your local authority recycling centre and put it in there, or if not, a licensed waste disposal. But generally, if it's a little bit, your local council will have a recycling tanker. So, we've taken off the equipment, and see if the burner now works. Wait for it to fire up correctly. And then we'll put the cover on. We'll put the cover on and it'll be round ready to work. That's fine. Another reason sometimes your burner won't fire is because of contamination within the oil tank itself. Imagine this as an oil tank, and that is your fuel. Underneath here is water. The water comes from condensation within the oil tank. If it's not checked periodically, it can build up to the point where it comes out of the oil pump to the boiler, therefore stopping it. So if you're bleeding your boiler and you see drops of water in the oil, get a service technician to check for the water and to remove it. One of the biggest dangers of people who run out of oil, they tend to tip their boiler up, the tank, the, sorry not the boiler, the tank up, to get as much oil out of the oil tank. In fact, that's a bad thing to do because you can see that it will raise the level of the water and water will go down your oil line to the burner and destroy, and I mean destroy your oil pump. You can may see from this picture the sediment and black particles in the water. They're actually microbiological growth that feeds off the oil. So your service technician should check for this and if the tank needs cleaning, it is, that's a good job to do. Right, I've shown you the fundamentals of bleeding an oil pump on your burner. If however you're not comfortable with this, always seek out a qualified, certified technician that would have a sticker on his van showing you, for example, 
that is qualified to do the job correctly. But always keep in mind all the time when you're be bleeding a boiler, the safety aspects of it. Make sure your boiler is turned off before you, you attempt to undo anything on the boiler. Make sure that the oil doesn't spill on the floor because it is a fire risk and environmental risk. But with a bit of care and thought, you can bleed the boiler yourself.